guys, and how about we watch Beast vs. Goliath? Okay, so... I don't know that much about Beast. I watched one of the X-Men X -Men movies. Never read any of the comics. I like the show Gargoyles, though, so... Okay, personally, I think Goliath is going to win just because of his strength. As far as I know, I don't think Beast is that strong. Like, amazingly strong. Whereas Goliath has been shown to be extremely strong and durable. Beast is probably more agile. And as for Wit, I know both are like philosophers. Uh, I don't know, I have to say Goliath just because he says a He's had a thousand years to ponder life and come up with new combat strategies. So yeah, personally, I think Goliath is going to win. So anyway, let's get to watching. Death Battle some of the greatest heroes of all are shunned by the very people they continue to protect. Yeah, it's pretty terrible, really. The worst deal ever. Like Beast, the blue genius of the X-Men. And Goliath, the gargoyle who gives new meaning to the phrase, tough as stone. <laughs> he wears an iron boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <laughs> Mutation, the key to evolution. <laughs> The process is slow, normally taking thousands of years. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps forward. Hmm. If that means we're all eventually going to transform into blue hairy monkey men, count me out. <laughs> Feared by most normal people, mutants generally begin to show signs of their uniqueness around puberty. Not so for Hank McCoy. Oh. Yeah, the instant he popped out, it was pretty clear that something was yeah. different about him. Namely, the giant monkey hands and feet. <laughs> That must have been rough on the way out. He better give <laughs> dear old mom double the presents on Mother's Day. <laughs> Though Hank successfully hid his mutation from the world throughout his adolescent life, he was eventually discovered and shunned. Constantly harassed and eventually kicked out of his own school, he was huh. left to wallow in loneliness. Mm. Until good old Wheels showed up and offered him a place on the mutant group known as the X-Men. Hank took on the nickname that was previously used to degrade him and transformed it into something new. His code name... The Beast. <laughs> I like Beast too, even if I think As Goliath's X -Men, gonna win. Beast became an integral member of this uncanny but he looked weird before he turned into a blue monster, I guess. Toe -to -toe with baddies like the immovable Blob and Craven the Hunter. But Beast was a genius, like yours truly, and quickly completed his doctoral studies. Eventually leaving the X-Men, he became a leading researcher in mutant genetics. Desperate to cure the mutant phenomenon, Beast developed a serum which he theorized would temporarily counteract the mutated genes in his body. Except it kind of did the opposite. Oh. Poor guy, now he truly was a beast. His transformation wasn't all bad though. Fuzzy Beast could now lift over 10 tons, run over 40 miles per hour, and jump over 25 feet in the air. He also Whoa. had a wicked healing factor which made him essentially bulletproof. But this was nerfed dramatically from healing instantaneously to over a couple of hours when Quasimodo's experiments turned him blue. For a scientific genius, he never did quite figure out how to turn back to his old self. <laughs> I mean, he's been able to turn into a cat man, oh. a horse man, blue Kelsey Grammer, and even <laughs> Somehow he always well, what, what was the horseman thing? That, that was weird. Able to hide in plain sight, Beast had little choice but to return to the X-Men as a teacher and a leader. As my research makes up it is possible to enhance the intelligence of Molluscus cephalopoda, such as the squid, to the same level as that of the average human. Even a little above average. Hmm. I'm afraid I must leave early, so I'll hand you over to my new teaching assistant, Mr. Cephalopod. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, everyone. Now, I'm going to as the neurological aspects of cognitive intelligence. Were there any questions? <laughs> Beast isn't just a genius, he's also a ridiculously strong fighter. He has survived oh, really? hits from the juggernaut, smashed open a tank with his bare fists, hit the ground with a punch so hard he created an earth-shattering shockwave, and lifted a solid gold oak tree. 
A cubic foot of gold. <laughs> <laughs> ton. Comparing the diameter of the tree to Hank's height, it's reasonable to believe that this golden tree weighs at least 60 tons. Whoa. Or a shit ton, to be precise. <laughs> Despite his athletic skill and enormous strength, Beast is a pacifist, preferring diplomacy over fisticuffs. He is rarely eager to enter a fight. In combat, he usually relies on his teammates to throw punches while he holds back to come up with game-winning strategies using his brilliant mind. Like huh. the time he figured out how to use Juggernaut's own bulk against him. As Archimedes said when he discovered the principle of displacement, Eureka. But when <laughs> he gets angry, he'll enter a rage which makes him so uncontrollably fierce, he's a danger even to his closest friends, literally unleashing the beast within. Oh. Beast's monstrous appearance remained a permanent part of his life. He was never truly accepted by society and even had to leave the woman he loved for fear she would become a target of mutant haters. But if he could have <laughs> his way, he would spend his days hanging from the ceiling with a nice cup of tea reading Shakespeare. But we don't always get what we want, so he'll have to settle for kicking ass. <laughs> heart averted feet and many a tear in our opposed path to persevere. A minor poet for a minor obstacle. One thousand years ago, this is why I know the sword ruled. It was a time of darkness. It was a world of fear. It was the age of gargoyles <laughs> and badass cartoon intro. Yep. Stone by day, warriors by night. Gargoyles used to be common throughout the world. Like the stone statues they inspired, gargoyles were known as protectors. Guarding their home and those inside was always their top priority. It's not every day your garden statue is also your top build bodyguard. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have a shitload more long gone. <laughs> In the year 994 AD, a clan of gargoyles formed a symbiotic relationship with the humans of a Scottish castle. Using their superhuman <laughs> strength, keen senses, and warrior spirit, the gargoyles defended the castle from invaders at night. In return, their human allies would watch over them during the day when they are most vulnerable, as gargoyles turn to solid stone in daylight. Right. The gargoyles were led by Goliath, a creature with a voice so sexy it makes humans turn to stone. If you know what I'm saying. You are trespassing. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to their beastly appearance, Goliath's clan eventually faced unjust prejudice from the very humans under their protection. We are most seriously displeased to allow beasts in the dining hall. These are unnatural creatures. No good can come from associating with them. <sighs> if that wasn't bad enough, Goliath was betrayed by his closest human friend, causing nearly his entire clan to be smashed to bits. Then the few that did survive were magically sealed in stone forever by a misinformed wizard. Talk about a shitty Monday. <laughs> sealed in stone forever, or until one very specific, seemingly impossible criteria was met. The terms of the spell were that they would sleep until the castle rises above the clouds. I remember when he that. Says above the clouds, he means it literally. So, stone they remain for a thousand years until in 1994. Some billionaire with a name that sounds like an antidepressant just happened to be crazy enough to try something. Xanatos moved every time the ancient castle to the top of his New York skyscraper. Which happened to poke above the clouds. The cost of which must have been astronomical. Why'd he even do that? She just felt like, oh, here's this cool looking castle. Why don't I put it on top of my skyscraper? leading his clan into the modern world. Despite being completely out of his element, Goliath adapted surprisingly fast. Why would anyone try to fight something that looked like that? No, this was the 90s. Oh, so he wore crazy colored clothing and used nonsensical description words like bodacious, Jalapeno. 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 Then when he actually had a jalapeno. How does he describe it? Damn it. Turn 
turns out, Goliath was naturally suited to traverse the broad expanse of the city with his enormous wings. Though to be clear, Goliath insists that he can't fly, only glide on the wind. Which I insist is bullshit! What else would you call what's happening right here other than friggin' flying? Regardless of wind direction, oh, yeah, I kind of forgot Goliath about that has scene. No trouble gliding wherever he wants to go. He only has issue taking off from the he ground, had a game, seriously. An elevated point to start from. Good thing you can scale giant skyscrapers from ground level without breaking a sweat. Goliath is strong enough to lift a car, create a small earthquake, and tear through steel with his bare claws like it was wet paper. He's fast enough to keep pace with foes who use rocket powered flight, and he's tough enough to survive a fall over 100 feet. He was even able to keep gliding after being shot by a Nazi plane's machine gun while fighting in World War II. He traveled through time. It was weird. Goliath I was honestly expecting like them to actually go into that. <laughs> can be when he goes into Apparently not. However, he's actually rather clever and wise. He was able to outsmart Oberon, who is practically an all-powerful magical god. And when Goliath's not leading his clan into battle or struggling to have a relationship with a human detective... Boundary! <laughs> he's usually holed up in his castle's library, reading. Wise and powerful, Goliath is a true force of nature. For 12 hours of the day. Right, the other 12, he's a motionless stone statue, making him a pretty easy target. Even yeah. if he's awake, Goliath often puts himself in danger for the sake of others, regardless of the risk. Hey, he's managed to survive for over a thousand years, and believe me when I say, you do not want to be on this gargoyle's bad side. My name is Goliath, and I belong to no one. Stop whining. A gargoyle doesn't He whine. roars. He roars! Yeah, that lip syncing, that lip syncing is bad, though. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! Okay, so I will admit, I underestimated Beast. He is very strong. But, at the same time, I feel like Goliath has a much better mobility advantage. Uh, Beast might be agile, but just Goliath's bulk and durability might win it for him. So, my thoughts still haven't changed on who will win. So, let's get back to watching. Okay. There's Beast. Whoa. Whoa, the sun really, really wanted to go sleep, didn't it? Oh, looks like they use the same animation. I mean, sprites from the game that they show. Cartoons. Beast and Goliath were pretty even in terms of strength and speed, making this more so a battle of wit and experience. Beast was always more of a team player, preferring not to fight directly unless mm -hmm. absolutely necessary. And since Goliath spent decades defending his ancient castle and New York from Vikings, thugs, magic beings, and ghosts, his combat experience trumped Beast. Yeah. 
Also, be careful not to misinterpret Beast's golden tree feat. While it might sound far more impressive than anything Goliath has done, Beast did not actually lift the whole 60 plus ton tree off the ground. It's nothing surpassing his usual feats. Hey, one time Goliath got nailed in the back by an anti-aircraft round. That's right, Goliath yep. got shot by That's a gun right. designed to destroy airplanes, got back up and dropped a radio tower on the fools that tried it. And Beast didn't wait until sunrise for an advantage for two reasons. One, he didn't know what would happen because gargoyles in his universe don't share the stone by day rule. And second, Beast isn't tough enough to stand against Goliath right. for 12 hours straight. Finally, Beast has fought somebody similar to Goliath named the Griffin, and only survived the fight due to his fellow X-Men Angel's help. In the end, Beast just didn't have the heart to <laughs> keep up with the gargoyle. The winner is Goliath. Okay, who's next? Next time on Death Battle. Oh, please be Raiden. I, I want to see Raiden. Darn it. Ah, close. By the way, yes, it is actually pronounced Raiden. A little off topic. But it is pronounced Raiden. Everyone in the game calls him Raiden. It's showtime. You're not showing us the other one. Hey <laughs> guys, thanks for watching. I'm Ben, I play Wiz. Hi. And I'm Chad, and I play Boomstick. And, uh,. Next time on Death Battle, Solid Snake. We have had Snake requested over and over and over again for years, and actually a few different possible huh. matchups. Mm -hmm. But if you guys want to see who he's fighting, make sure you go follow us on our social media. There's that at ScrewAttack on Twitter or Facebook.com forward slash where they're telling you to. because we'll be announcing his combatant very soon. But in the meantime, be sure to check out the latest Game Overthinker and the latest okay. Desk of Death so, Battle, which is all about how Tony Stark's watching. brain tumor once like, saved the world. It's comment, absolutely ridiculous. and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching Death Battle. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, make sure you click like, subscribe, On them too. and tell your friends about it. And we'll see you guys next time. Later. Later.